Hello, it's Helen Godden here, gradually <laughs> losing more nails. But here we are, it's um, block number four of our Flower Power Quilt Along. So this is the daisy. So how are you going with your blocks? You're tracing them each day. Don't forget to do the outlining stitch. I've done all that on mine already. So stitching it over every black line to uh, make it secured and give us more definition to that shape. What are we going to quilt in this one? Hmm, let's have a look. So we're one week into our flower power quilt along. This is block four, so that means we've been hanging together for eight days now. So I hope this is helping with your um, isolation and you know having to stay at home. At least this way we can be that little bit together each day and um, focus on something else. And there's nothing better to focus on than a beautiful, simple daisy. One of my favourite flowers growing up. My mum always had little white daisies in the garden. Um, just the simplicity of them. They just are the ultimate floral design. That's a really nice simple treatment for a daisy. They are to me the symbol of simplicity. They really are beautiful. And now for the leaves. Let's get some contrast and get a fair bit of black into these black thread so that there's a high contrast between the petals and the leaf. So I've gone for a diagonal treatment on the leaves here to get more of that black thread in there. You could decide to use your Panda Pencil or marker just to help you get those diagonals consistent. They don't have to be perfect, just consistent in angle so that the leaf joins up visually when it goes behind that petal. Looks like I'm doing the same on the other side as well. Getting that nice angle, sort of like the veins of a leaf. We get that little bit just there, fill it in. Then the same on the other side. So always thinking about a design that's fairly easy to make it look continuous, particularly when it's interrupted by those other petal shapes. Okay, I think that's good. It's adding a fair bit of black uh, or, you know, dark variation um, compared to the petals so that the leaf pushes back and lets the petals stay up on top. And now we've got that triangular backdrop. There's that large triangle in the background of this block. So I'm going for a stipple. If in doubt, I tend to stipple. <laughs> it's my go-to design. But it is a good one to fill in these tiny little spaces. And it's good practice. So again, make sure that stipple touches the black edge of your design and that'll help it push behind the daisy and really be the backdrop. The ideal scenario is that it looks like a piece of fabric covered in stippling pattern that we cut the triangle to make the backdrop. That's the ideal uh, finished look. This is where if I had a little bit of my um, ink tense pencils or some of my dyes, just being able to touch those up with a bit of color might really lift that. So I'm thinking of coming back in and painting with some white, but we'll wait and see. I don't have to make it complex just yet. Let's keep it simple. We've got two areas now for the background. I don't think I've done any spirals for a while. Let's do some spirals. I'm just going to turn the job around and launch into some spirals. Now spirals are always based on the way that we write the number six. There's a six and then I come into the middle and then work my way back out and keep traveling around that outer edge until I find space for the next spiral or I bang onto something and uh, the spiral's finished then I can start a new one.
you can see when there's no room for more spirals I just continue with an echo that looks like part of the plan okay one area to go and it's a small area so I think I'm going to go for some bubbles and there's a bit of a warning that comes with bubbles is always check the area you're going to do it in because they will drive you insane okay so let's have a look yeah not too large an area I'm going to have a variety of bubbles that's basically going to look a bit like this so you can see with the bubbles I actually over complete each curve so you create a bubble and then keep stitching on it so I say over complete the bubble so it's like you're on a roundabout and you've gone around that roundabout one and a half times looking for the next spot to turn off to your next roundabout in that way those bubbles become all bunched up together and continuous and I think that brings us to the end of our block number four the daisy so thanks very much for joining me I hope you enjoyed today's block and I'll see you here again in two days time for our next block that we're going to share together see you soon education and inspiration from helengodden.com